In this lesson, we'll consider solving a linear first order system of ODEs in the form of x prime equals a times x using the eigenvalue method when matrix A has repeated eigenvalues. Let's begin by considering the matrix A, which is a two by two matrix with entries three, zero, zero, three. Let's determine the eigenvalues. Recall to do this, we set up the equation, the determinant of the difference of A and lambda I equals zero and solve for lambda. So here we have our setup. Simplifying and solving for lambda, we have lambda equals three. And notice in this case, the solution of three or the root of three has a multiplicity of two. Or we can say the eigenvalue is repeated. We call the multiplicity of the eigenvalue in the characteristic equation the algebraic multiplicity. In this case, there also exists two linearly independent eigenvectors, which will not always be the case. Here, two linearly independent eigenvectors are the vectors one, zero, and zero, one, corresponding to the eigenvalue three. This means the so-called geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue is also two. Let's review how we found these eigenvectors. We set up the equation, the difference of a and lambda i times vector v equals a zero vector, and then we determine an eigenvector v. So for lambda equals three, here's the setup. Simplifying, notice how we have the zero matrix times vector v equals a zero vector, which indicates both v1 and v2 are free variables, which we use to determine two linearly independent eigenvectors. For example, we can let v1 equal one and v2 equal zero. We can also let v2 equal one and v1 equal zero, giving us two linearly independent eigenvectors. In all the theorems where we required a matrix to have n distinct eigenvalues, we only really needed to have n linearly independent eigenvectors. For example, x prime times ax, in this case, has a general solution, x equals c1 times the eigenvector v1 times e to the three t, plus c2 times the eigenvector v2 times e to the three t. Again, this only works because we were able to find two linearly independent eigenvectors, which will not always be the case. Let us restate the theorem about real eigenvalues. In the following theorem, we will repeat eigenvalues according to algebraic multiplicity. So for our matrix A, we would say that it has eigenvalues three and three, or lambda sub one equals three, and lambda sub two equals three. Our theorem states, suppose that an n by n matrix P has real eigenvalues, not necessarily distinct, which are lambda sub one through lambda sub n, and there are n linearly independent corresponding eigenvectors, the vectors v1 through vn. Then the general solution to x prime equals P times x can be written as x equals C1 times the eigenvector V1 times e to the power of lambda sub one t, plus all the way through plus C sub n times the eigenvector Vn times e to the power of lambda sub n t. The geometric multiplicity of an eigenvalue of algebraic multiplicity n is equal to the number of corresponding linearly independent eigenvectors. The geometric multiplicity is always less than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity. The theorem handles the case when these two multiplicities are equal for all eigenvalues. If for an eigenvalue the geometric multiplicity is equal to the algebraic multiplicity, then we say the eigenvalue is complete. In other words, the hypothesis of the theorem could be stated as, if all the eigenvalues of P are complete, then there are n linearly independent eigenvectors, thus we have the given general solution. If the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue is two or greater, then the set of linearly independent eigenvectors is not unique up to multiples as it was before. For example, for the diagonal matrix A we considered before with entries three, zero, and zero, three, we could have also picked eigenvectors one, one, and one, negative one, or in fact, any two pair of linearly independent vectors. The number of linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to lambda is the number of free variables we obtain when solving a times v equals lambda times v. We pick specific values for these free variables to obtain eigenvectors. If we pick different values, we may get different eigenvectors. And now let's talk about defective eigenvalues. If an n by n matrix has less than n linearly independent eigenvectors, it is said to be deficient. Then there is at least one eigenvalue with an algebraic multiplicity that is higher than its geometric multiplicity. We call the eigenvalue defective and the difference between the two multiplicities is called the defect. Let's consider the matrix with entries three, one, zero, three. This matrix also has an eigenvalue of three, 
with multiplicity two. Let us try to compute the eigenvectors. So here we have the setup simplifying. Notice in this case, v1 is a free variable and v2 must equal zero. This indicates that every eigenvector must be in the form of v1, zero. Any two vectors in the form of v1, zero are going to be linearly dependent and hence the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue is one. Therefore, the defect is one, again, because the algebraic multiplicity is two and the geometric multiplicity is one, two minus one is equal to one. This means we can no longer apply the eigenvalue method directly to a system of ODEs with such a coefficient matrix, meaning a coefficient matrix in which an eigenvalue is defective. Let us continue with the example where matrix A has entries three, one, zero, three, and the equation x prime equals ax. We found an eigenvalue lambda equals three of algebraic multiplicity of two with defect one. We can find one eigenvector, the vector one, zero, by letting v one equal one, and therefore we do have one solution, which is x one equals the eigenvector one, zero times e to the three t. But now we are stuck. We can get no other solutions from standard eigenvectors, but we need to have two linearly independent solutions to find the general solution. Let us try another solution in the form of x2 equals the sum of v2 and v1 times t, all times e to the three t. Next we differentiate to find x2 prime. Notice this requires the product rule, where we have x2 prime equals v1 times e to the three t, plus three times the sum of v2 and v1 t times e to the three t, which if we distribute and gather the e to the three t and the t e to the three t terms, we can write x2 prime as shown here on the right. We are assuming that x2 is a solution and therefore x2 prime must equal a times x2. So let's go ahead and compute a times x2, which is shown below. If we distribute and compare the equation on the right to the equation above by looking at the coefficients of e to the three t and t to the three t, notice that three v2 plus v1 must equal a times v2 and three v1 must equal a times v1. We can take these two equations and write them in the form below, where we can take the first equation and write it in the form of the difference of a and three i times v2 equals v1, and we can write the second equation in the form of the difference of a and three i times v1 equals the zero vector. Therefore, x2 is a solution if these two equations are satisfied. The second equation is satisfied if v1 is an eigenvector, and we found the eigenvector before, which is the vector one, zero. So if we can find a vector v2 that solves the difference of a and three i times v2 equals v1, then we are done because we'll have a second independent solution. And I've set this equation up below. Again, we have the difference of matrix a and three i times the vector v2, which here has components a and b, equals the eigenvector one, zero. Simplifying, we get the equation shown here on the right, Continuing on the next slide, notice in this case, a is a free variable and b must equal one. So if we let a equal zero, we now have a second vector, vector v2, which is the vector zero, one, and we can write the general solution. Recall earlier we found x1 equals the eigenvector v times e to the power of three t, which for the general solution gives us x equals c1 times the vector one, zero, times e to the three t, and then using the vectors v2 and v1, we now know x2, shown below, is another independent solution, which gives us plus c2 times the sum of the vector v2, which is the vector zero, one, plus the eigenvector v1, which is the vector one, zero, times t, all times e to the three t. Which if we multiply, we get the form shown here on the right. Before we go, let's describe the general algorithm. Suppose that lambda is an eigenvalue of multiplicity two, defect one. We first find an eigenvector v1 of lambda, that is the vector v1 that solves the difference of a and lambda i times the vector v1 equals zero, and then we find a second vector, the vector v2, such that the difference of a and lambda i times the vector v2 equals the eigenvector v1. This gives us two linearly independent solutions in the form shown below, which we can then use to determine the general solution. I hope you found this helpful.